um, introduction. Please, right. Um, I will uh, open it now. Brother? Brother? Yes. Imali. Okay, so welcome to the online lecture, Dignified Menstruation in a Global Discourse, an unseen topic in the development policies and human rights. Um, yeah, it's And I'm Maya Loh from the Afro Asian Institute of Salzburg. And I will start give you an introduction about the, uh, how the webinar will um, be uh, structured. Um, I will present now Rada for a moment. Rada is from Nepal and now she's in Kathmandu. And uh, she was educated as a nurse and also she did a master's in public health work and also sociology and um, also, she's a human rights activist, as you will see also in her presentation. And she is also the CEO of the Global South Coalition for Dignified Menstruation, which was founded last year. And she will also let you know more in detail about this organization and network afterwards. Um, what I wanted to mention before I will give over the word to Rada is that um, dignified menstruation is really a global topic. Also in the EU, there are really a lot of uh, young women, transgender, that don't feel comfortable with their menstruation. Um, like for example, in the UK, there are about um, in the age 14 and 21, um, these group of people, they, 40 percent, they don't feel uh, no, 70 percent don't feel comfortable um, having the menstruation and are ashamed about it and 40% of them, they can't afford proper menstrual products. For example, they have to use toilet paper. And also in Austria, um, the, there's a similar case, 60% of uh, young women uh, and transgender feel uh, ashamed about their menstruation. It's still a taboo. They don't have people to talk about it. Um, and yeah. So it's really a global issue also in our context and uh, Rada will show it also on a broader level and especially also in Nepal, what the case is. So yeah, I give you over the word Rada. Uh, we are very happy that you do this presentation today. And yeah, afterwards we invite everybody to discuss with us and you. <laughs> Thank you. Namaste. Good afternoon, good evening. Salam to all my friends who are joining across the globe. Thank you very much. It is so overwhelming. Uh, I also would like to thank you. Thank to my best friends, Inge, Daniela, and um, Maya for uh, creating this opportunity. Actually, we have planned for the on-site discussions about uh, six months before, but uh, uh, COVID-19 locked down us, and, uh, but we created the opportunity. We saw the silver lining uh, within the lockdown, and we are here, and it is more than that uh, uh, classroom discussion. Um, we have a very limited time, but the issue or subject is very complex and difficult. So I will try my best uh, um, uh, to make it clear and simpler. Uh, sometimes when I fasten it, uh, I speak fast. In that case, Indy or Maya just give me the signal uh, for slow. And uh, 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 I'm not... Uh, technically smart so if anything going to happen please bear with me and also by here in Kathmandu very heavy rain and strong and the power is uh, on and off and in the in that case uh, uh, India and Maya will continue because we have a backup plan as well uh, we, we have already recorded audio about this presentation 
today i will discuss about the dignified menstruation starting my personal story uh, uh, nepal's uh, practices and try to link with the global discourse and uh, also link with the covid-19 pandemic uh, why it is very important and urgent to discuss uh, uh, today first uh, before starting the presentation i encourage you all to think uh, um, for a moment uh, i would like to request you to go on your side out and uh, please use the chat box for the communication and also mention your country because a uh, few uh, i saw few of uh, friends uh, whom i really don't know so i wanted to know where are you from um while you are thinking about your childhood i um, i like to request you to remember your first time in your life to hear or to know about the word of menstruation how did you know where do you know what was your first feeling when you learn or heard about the menstruation and then do you discuss about the menstruation with your mother sister father colleagues or anyone who is next to you or partner publicly this is spend one minute uh, on it and uh, write in the chat box Okay. Okay. Let's move. I don't see the chat box here. It's not working in my computer. I Namaste. You have to go on the sign chat, and you should. Okay. Can you read out the response very quickly? Maybe around 13, can't remember. I talked to my mom, to close friends, but not big deal. Okay, thank uh, you very from much. From my thank mother, you. yeah, from my mother. My, yeah, so with friends, yeah. Yeah, that's. Thank you very much, who responded, and thank you, Maya. Uh, one of my madam, can you? Uh, Turn off your um, speaker, please. Just, just do on. Uh, yes, thank you. Let's move on. Let me start my personal story. How do I engage in the uh, journey of dignified menstruation? Around 1980, when I was seven years old, first time in my life I. Heard and I know about the menstruation. When my three sisters and mother were following the restriction during menstruation, and I knew the menstruation is a curse from the God. I literally witnessed my three sisters and mother were following more than forty types of restriction related with the touch, food, and mobility, including cow sight. I was shocked. terrified so traumatized i do not like to live as a girl i wanted to die so at the age of 9 i left home for committing suicide somehow it could not happen but my mind and heart constantly thinking about it that means how could i die how would i born as a boy and at the age of 
I had a first period. I ran away from the house for five days in order to avoid all kind of drastics and what my three sisters and mother were followed. I continuously lived with the ignorance, confusion, trauma from the menstrual restriction till 16 years. Coincidentally, I went to the nursing college. I would get the opportunity to learn about the menstruation and then I considered menstruation is a pride and power since then. This is how I started to speak up. I started to speak up without any uh, influence from any uh, people or organization or program, anything. I just become an organic activist from my pain and passion. Let's examine the menstruation within the religion. In Nepal, Hindu is a dominant country, though we are the secular country. We call menstruation in different names. Rajaswala, monthly, Mainabari, but the meaning is, this, is impure, sin from the God, dirty, contaminated. Yes, my three sisters and mother, there are varieties of restriction during menstruation. They are related with the touch, food, mobility, or participation. During menstruation, girls and women cannot touch any men members. Plant of vegetables, fruits is in some places is called temple, kitchen, house, depending on place to place. Likewise, they cannot eat any sour foods, fruits, and in some places, meat and meat products. And in terms of the mobility, they cannot join any kind of meetings, cultural gatherings, birthday celebration, and so many other activities happening in their territory. Though Muslim community is a minority in Nepal, about 3%, they have the different name as like Hindus for menstruation, but the meaning is the same, impure, dirty. And they also follow some sort of same kind of restriction related with the touch, food and mobility. But most of the people, most of the scholars, or most of the media do not highlight this kind of things. They only mentioned that the, the old Hindu tradition people are following the missile restrictions in Nepal. This is how you can find in the Google or literature. But in practice, even the Muslim communities who are so much scared across the country, they keep following the restrictions uh, during menstruation. Among the Janjatis, mostly they uh, belong uh, with the uh, Buddhism, Buddhist uh, religion. They also call the menstruation differently. And the, the meaning of the menstruation is, uh, is impure, dirty, is like uh, Hindu and uh, uh, Muslim. And they also follow the some sort of restriction related to the towards for mobility. But uh, mostly it is a little bit less visible compared to the uh, compared to uh, um, uh, other religions these pictures taken from different parts of nepal as well as from uk uh, last time last year i went there and then i engaged with so many um, uh, nepalese communities uh, uh, who, who are resided over there and they also continuously practicing uh, restriction during menstruation even though they are living over there for last uh, more than uh, two decades. Let's examine the uh, menstrual practice across the globe in terms of the religion. In Christianity, it is clearly mentioned that the menstrual blood is uh, unclean and that is why they have some sort of restriction. It is not like the Nepalese communities, like 40 types of restriction, but there is a, some sort of restriction. They cannot uh, touch uh, uh, children, they cannot go to the uh, church or any gatherings. The green one belongs with the uh, uh, Islam. Uh, it is also in uh, uh, Quran, the restriction all mentioned in the Quran as well. They also consider menstruation is impure, 
dirty. During menstruation, either they can go to the Makkah or or uh, touch the Quran or pray or touch the main members, including sexual intercourse. Among the Buddhists, the um, Buddhism they they mention that this this is the natural process, but in practice, they are not. Uh, um, they also are following the restriction during menstruation. They do not go to the uh, temples. If you see uh, most of the uh, monastery, put the male uh, 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 monks. You don't you don't see the female or very rarely. Among the Hindus, the the two Hindu philosophy, Chanakya Niti and Manusmriti, clearly mention that the menstruation is a dirty, impure. That is why they have to follow the varieties of restrictions uh, uh, during menstruation. This is the uh, uh, scenario from the perspective of the old religious practice and the beliefs. Let's back to go again to Nepal in terms of the direction. Why I'm trying to show in this way? Because most of the literatures, most of the international media highlighted that the east part of the country, there is no restriction during menstruation. But if you go to the eastern Nepal, girls, women, men, men means priest, uh, they also limit, men also limit uh, uh, from the touching with the girls and women who are menstruating or any menstruators. They also consider the menstruation is impure, dirty, contaminated, and keep following the uh, more than 10, um, sometimes uh, more than 20 types of restrictions during menstruation related with the touch, food, mobility, as we discussed before. Most of the literatures showed that, most of the uh, international media showed that, mentioned that the menstruation practice only in the rural areas, only in the uh, uh, people who are not educated, only by the people who are poor. But this is not true. The Kathmandu, which is the, the uh, land for the uh, uh, most educated, most rich, uh, and most of the people working in different uh, uh, sectors is a high position, and they also follow the restriction during menstruation. There is no differences, but in Kathmandu it is not visible. These photos you can see. This is the. These photos belongs with the um, from the NGO work, the e schools, the uh, colleges, and everywhere they are practicing different type, different types of uh, restrictions during menstruation. In in some extent, they are more stricter than the other parts of the country uh, because they wanted to continue it at the name of the culture, at the name of the pride. This is the pictures you you may familiar from the media, from the literature. These are the pictures from the West Nepal. In West Nepal, uh, menstruation um, known as a tree, chaupodi, ontachaditi, and that means uh, it's impure, uh, dirty, contaminated, collected blood. And they also following the restrictions related with the uh, charge, food, mobility. But in West Nepal, it is visible. As you see in the pre picture, somewhere they make the, not everywhere in the West Nepal, in some places, it depending on the topography. If it is all fine area, there is uh, snowing, uh, more than uh, six months, it is very cold, and that time, they cannot uh, live outside and they, they leave the ground floor of the house. The ground floor is used for the domestic animals and they also make a small corner over there and they leave. Somewhere they make a separate hut.
let's go back again in the global uh, scenario. The menstruation is universal. No doubt on this. This planet is this this and moving forward because of the menstruation. In in 2018, in UK, there is a one report conducted by the uh, Plan International and uh, Be a Girl. They said that the menstrual stigma, taboo, and accessibility do not significantly differ from the global league. So we can conclude that the education doesn't matter. Or we can, we can uh, discuss later why it is the issue of the uh, bias or uh, ignorance or the overlook uh, in the history of human rights and development uh, globally. This is a, another statement where President Trump said, you could see there was a blood comes from uh, her eyes, blood coming out of her wherever. This resembles the mindset existed with the period even in the US. My, is, is there anything? I saw the voice. I heard a voice. Is there any problem? No, no, I think it's fine. Continue. continue, everything is fine. Yeah. Sorry? Just continue, it's fine. Okay, okay. Let's examine the restriction across the globe. No matter whether you are from uh, west or east, south or north, as Maya highlighted uh, earlier, the restriction during menstruation is practicing across the globe, but the uh, least or the severity and forms are different. The 10 types of restriction like praying, banished, banished from home, cooking, bathing, grooming, nature, animal socializing, exercising, mutual product. These kind of restrictions is practicing in different, uh, different uh, countries in the world. In Japan, uh, they have a menstrual leave in 1951, but they never uh, asked for the menstrual leave because of the taboo. In, in Japanese sushi uh, restaurant, they, they don't put, they don't allow to female um, safe because they consider, they think that the menstrual uh, women uh, contaminated their sushi. So Israel, uh, Indonesia, uh, UK, China, everywhere. There is a restriction. There is a taboo. Let me give you one example from the CNN or, or maybe the uh, any um, news, uh, any TV channel in your country as well. While advertising the sanitary product there, there is a blue liquid. I'm not, I worked in the operation theater. I never seen the blue uh, blood in my life. Why they put the blue liquid while advertising the sanitary pad? It is very clear that there is a stigma taboo for the menstrual blood. If the blood from the nose is okay, if the blood from the uh, abdomen surgery, that is also okay, but the blood from the vagina, no one likes to talk about it. That is why they use the uh, blue liquid. That means, there is a, a symbolically, indirectly, the stigma, javo, and some sort of restriction is practicing across the globe. But we do not realize it because we don't see it. We don't try to try to see it. This is a little bit complex. Since the time of Aristotle and Hippocrates, they use the word of menstruation. They define the menstruation is a magical blood, something poisonous. Oh, the women did not have anything happen, but men, if the men have a small cut or something, some blood, it's just they, they, they feel pain, they start to cry, and they uh, ask for, just for many things. But the women, 
they have bleeding for five days. They have they have bleeding during child birth, but they don't have anything. That means that there there must be something. That kind of discussion was there during the time of Aristotle and Plato. For a long time, till nineteen twenty, there was not much discussion about the menstruation. People just make a remorse. Sometimes they said it is a poisonous. Sometimes it's impure. Sometimes it's dirty. And there are so many funny stories. The 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 menstrual girl cannot uh, toss the food, cannot toss the wine bottle, cannot toss the grapes, cannot uh, pick up the tomatoes. That kind of things going on during the, these days. In only 1920, the the scientists identified the function of the ovaries. Before that, they don't see the He sends of the uh, woman's body. They are more confined with the brain, the, the 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 bones, the kidney, the liver, the heart, the lungs, everywhere. But the uterus never get the uh, chance to 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 uh, be a priority to, for the discussion. That was the very uh, strange and very too much is a painful. Even the scientists uh, did not see the uh, the meaning of their existence. And during that time, most of the scientists coming um, belong with the men. I mean, they are the men, and they don't. They did not see the woman body as a priority. In 1948, in history, two things uh, uh, happens uh, remarkably. One is human rights declaration. The other one, the WHO. Uh, Uh, it started with saying uh, WHO defined the definition of the health, but they did not put the woman's body over there in their definition. No, there is no single word of the menstruation over there in both documents. In 1979, we have a CEDA Convention of Elimination. Uh, of all forms of discrimination against girls and women, which is considered the very strongest and first um, international human rights instrument uh, in the uh, global human rights discourse, but that document also ignore. That document also so silence regarding the menstruation. And in 1998, WHO conducted the study in more than 40 countries. They identified. Different types of restriction as we practice in Nepal today, in forty uh, different countries, including Europe, but they, that was not directly for the menstruation. They were doing research for the family planning, whether the family planning was acceptable or not. While doing the family planning research, they identified the barrier of the menstrual practice. Unfortunately, WHO also did not talk much about the menstruation. In 1994 and 1995, we have another very significant, remarkable uh, um, uh, international event took place, but they also show silence about the menstruation. In 2014, the Human Rights Council in Geneva office did talk very. Uh, Filthy way. It's a very indirect way about the menstruation. First time in history. Actually, that was the Water and Sanitation Unit was reviewing their findings, and they come up with the idea that the menstrual restriction is a barrier to to reach out the target against the water and sanitation. For example, during menstruation. The girls, women, and the menstruators cannot touch the uh, uh, toilet or the uh, source of water supply. That is why their target were not met, and they knew that oh, we need to discuss about the menstruation too. This is how in the global discourse the menstruation comes into the uh, highlights. And in 2015, when we approved the Sustainable Development Goals, plan for the next. Another 15 years, but that document again did not speak about the menstruation. Under the goal six, the six, the target 6.2, very indirectly, 
talk about the menstruation girl friendly school learning environment not is called girl friendly learning environment in that way they said and if the leadership is a pro pro human right with a good mindset or understanding on dignified menstruation that person can link and work but there is no any mandatory um, uh, 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 provision for working on menstruation this is the scenario at the global uh, level from civilization to date it shows that the menstruation is dirty polluting poison bad luck impure no matter what kind of human rights instrument or what, how many projects we have or how many conferences we have done it doesn't make any sense for the menstruation menstruation is always sidelined and always the silence matter of the silence and the ignorance let's review the activities which is more uh, directly um, connected to the reproductive health rights in 1930 family planning campaign started in history and gradually there are so many activities related to the women's reproductive uh, um, uh, health uh, uh, pop up or come up like sep motherhood uterus prolapse um, uterus and breast cancer hiv sti sep reproduction and adolescent health do you see the menstruation uh, prominently anywhere i do not see it none of the organization or none of the program none of the uh, policies directly openly talk about the menstruation they simply talk about the menstruation while talking about the adolescent self policy they simply talk oh, menstruation is a, is a, is a uh, developmental milestone when they are in the uh, um, uh, that is simply but there is not discuss about the different aspects which is related and raised by the menstruation so menstruation nowhere but what menstruation is everywhere how could you discuss how could you implement the program of family planning without talking menstruation or self motherhood or uterus prolapse or breast cancer self abuse everywhere it is everywhere but visibly intentionally principally the menstruation is nowhere in a course of reproductive health um, in history so let's discuss about the uh, impacts first impact is menstrual restriction or menstrual practices construct the power as you shared earlier it is the example uh, taken from, uh, on the basis of uh, nepali experience um, we did a research last year and that research you can find in a google uh, it is published in online um, uh, uh, journal from europe the, the, in between the age of 16 to 12 years the girls and boys unconsciously knew about the word of menstruation from their family members mother father sisters or schools or documentary or cinema and from any kind of means they knew the word of menstruation that distinguishes the differences between girl and boys and girls socialize in a way that inferior powerless demonized than the boys and she applicate for the silence because she is impure she is less than the boys at the main time boys socialize with the feelings of powerful superior and they have so much so many privileges uh, than the girls and gradually the girls started to uh, adjust with, with the uh, exploitation abuses uh, discrimination whereas the boys keep keep doing because of the privileges because of the superiority in the end or um, in simply the girls converted as a victim and boys converted as a rapist but it is not the mistake of both of them it is a mistake of our socialization because we never talk about the menstruation when they are quite young or when they are in 6 to 12 years we, we don't talk um uh, there is no dialogue between uh, uh, mother and uh, 
son or father and daughter or sister and uh, brother we keep silence all the time and uh, we never break the silence we uh, we create the power and psychologically unconsciously it construct and set the power within themselves let's see the impact on girls education see in the bottom because of the um, uh, menstrual blood um, considered as a impure dirty contaminated there are uh, three types of uh, restriction and because of these restrictions girls um, experiences or subject with the different kinds of uh, practices and it gives the some uh, psychological uh, uh, psychological uh, perceptions and behaviors that means low self esteem psychosocial trauma anxiety separation they cannot uh, live with their parents they cannot uh, play with their uh, brothers so this is how um, they also um, started to um, uh, feel uh, sort of depression and they also remain absent in the school let's let's calculate the uh, days of absent in a school five days in a, a month means 5 to the 60 days that means two months in a year and it is very difficult to uh, um, adjust and finally she start to fail in a class and next year she dropped the school and this is how she trap in a child marriage she trap in a um, um, uh, low or uh, deprived from the social uh, economic opportunities and trapped in a poverty or poor man, uh, maternal and child health. So today, globally, many organizations working on uh, uh, girls' education, they are working on child, elimination of child marriage. The elimination of child marriage is one of the uh, major tasks for the Sustainable Development Goals 2030, but they never talk about the menstruation. Unless and until we don't talk about the menstruation, we cannot eliminate the child marriage. We cannot improve the quality education of the girls. We cannot build their leadership. So we, we, we simply talk about the structure of the school. It is good to have the uh, well facilitated, well equipped school. But before that, we need to build the confidence among the girls. We need to educate them. What is the insulation? And what is the essence of it? Let's assess the uh, uh, menstrual restrictions and its impact on health. Because of the deprivation of eating vegetables, fruits, milk products, or citrus food or fruits, she profoundly deficient on nutritional food. And it's a reason, um, eventually, she is suffering from different kinds of physical illnesses and psychosocial trauma and her health and dignity heavily compromised because of the restriction during menstruation. But those who are working on uh, women's health and dignity, they don't see the menstrual, menstrual practice as the underlying cause for that. Unless and until we don't see, it is difficult to improve the health uh, of the women. Likewise, this slide challenged the definition of the WHO. In 1948, that means about 70 years back, the WHO declared and had been working around the physical, mental, social, and recently the spiritual health. But because of the restrictions during menstruation, the girls, women, and the menstruators' health so much compromised. Sometimes they, they experience the illnesses, infection, related with the urinary tract and the reproductive tract infections. Because of the restriction, because of not availability of the facilities, girls uh, limit themselves to drink properly during menstruation. As a result, they, 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 they suffer from the urinary tract infection. They have a problem with the kidney. Likewise, because of the uh, stigma, unavailability of the uh, sanitary products, 
do you also use the same cloth dirty water for hand washing and they also suffer from the uh, uh, different kinds of uh, reproductive tract infections vaginitis endometritis which is not only vagina uterus uterus cancer infertility abortion there are so many things happening and in some cases the rape abuse murder death from the snake bite or um, suffocation of carbon collection of the carbon monoxide there are different kinds of uh, illnesses uh, they experience but in in media only death murder rape the police cases were come up and uh, the people only consider this kind of issues but the other issues which is really impact on the women's life for a long term uh, in everyday business it is not considered likewise the mental health is not considered at all no one uh, uh, think about the mental status of the girls and women and menstruators when they are separated or when they are deprived from uh, participating in any meetings or uh, any social cultural gatherings and because of the restriction they so much um, uh, put in exclusion and vulnerability and school drop out so it is a very interconnecting overlapping and very complex the complexity is more here please uh, take a long breath and take this uh, uh, was this uh, slide with meditative mode see the arrows how much overlapping i have a feeling that i could not figure out is, is uh, reality it is still i unable to make clear because of the menstrual restriction the girls and women and menstruators lose their personal peace peace within the person globally we are talking about the conflict which refers only the uh, uh, guns or, or the bombing blasting the absence of the war is not a peace the menstruator constantly thinking why do i born like girl oh how, how could i hide it how how um, could i um, uh, control it should i take the contraceptive pills to stop it so that kind of uh, things keep coming because of the stigma taboos restriction and it is completely um uh, um complete form of the conflict within the person and later she also constantly have a conflict with the family members mother father brother sisters they keep fighting because there are so many um, things to do and do not and now that it is more uh, more conflicting because in urban cities the girls started to educate and they know about the menstruation and they are more fighting with their um, uh, family members and they also have a conflict with the policy makers so menstrual restriction is a key factor key underlying cause for the invisible conflicts likewise it is a key barrier for the empowerment in this uh, consequences she could not consider herself she could not decide about her ideology about her body that means she is disempowered and this all uh, uh, elements are the perfect example of the violation of the human right and given this scenario the the goal of sustainable development goal is unable to reach the same idea in different way see the women in the bottom imagine this this uh, women or menstruated simply um, you can imagine any, any any in any uh, mode if see from uh, the frontliner worker right now 
is a doctor is a nurse is a cleaner is a social worker if she is a disabled if she is a representative from lgbtqi especially the lesbians and if she is uh, unable to communicate by language a poor don't have access with the technology how she could reach to the, the in the top sustainable development goals the slogan of the sustainable development goal is no one living behind and without talking about the menstruation how the global community can reach uh, or can achieve the target of the sdg i really do not understand since 2014 when the human rights council started to talk about the menstruation the global activism on menstruation focused on product on accessibility use waste management this is the menstrual value chain you have a access you can use it you have a very good uh, Uh, mechanism for the um, disposal or waste management even that case the menstruators could not be empowered because we do not demystify the rumors myth around menstruation let me give one example from kenya last september in kenya 14 years girls commit suicide In Kenya, since 2017, the government has been providing the free sanitary pad, and that girl have a menstruation in school. She is teased uh, by her friends and the teachers, and when she back to home and she commits suicide. So first, we have to um, brush to myth, rumors, silence, and the rest of the things we can manage. or if we are working already in excess use and waste let's talk about the means dignity first why it is important so it is a kind of uh, uh, positively negative impact we are distributing the sanitary pad that means oh menstruation is a dirty you have to hide it so that kind of message we are giving in different way so even today we are living in in, in such a a uh, uh, fancy uh, old and we are not much critical and we are not much acknowledging we are not ready uh, for um, uh, addressing the issues related to the menstruation see the power gun let me turn on my emergency light just a second that's the the zero okay yes so to me the dignity is very important without dignity the rest of the things we achieve but it looks it will take so much time and energy to achieve why we are talking this year, right here not uh, not like this we are trying to reach from other side around other side so i really don't understand let's uh, assess the some celebration global celebration in 2018 megan duchet of sussex she announced the support to the uh, uh, part uh, uh, factory uh, which is um, run by the women in, in mumbai likewise padan padman mummy which is quite popular and last year oscar for the documentary period in the sentence it's a very good i really happy and appreciate because of this move move our celebrations created a space for the menstruation earlier no one like to talk about menstruation but at least they started to talk it's good but in terms of the dignity this this celebration these awards doesn't help at all or a pad or hygiene doesn't guarantee the dignity of the girls 
women and Hindu religious still in the Middle East. These all attempts were focused on hygiene or bad. In terms of the global intervention, in academia, especially by the socialists and anthropologists, they keep working about uh, half century time, but more focused uh, based on the uh, USA, and it is very technical. Since 2012, UNICEF and WHO start to talk about the menstrual health management, they define, but it is very narrow concept. And in 2014, UNESCO and UN Human Rights Council, they talk about the menstrual hygiene management. And in terms of the dignity or dignified menstruation, it's a very holistic, very open initiative, which is led by Nepal government. In 2017, Nepal government drafted the policy, though it, it, it is yet to approved by the cabinet, but there is something and the government and the uh, Islam um, agency, I, I mean the uh, other stakeholders, keep doing the activities around the dignified ministries. So in a global history, Nepal um, is a pioneer uh, to initiate the journey of dignified ministries. It's a kind of paradigm safety. Uh, Maya. Can you share the link or um, how, how could I show the video? Inge? I have a two minutes video. I think uh, Maya will share the link in chat first and I was uh, timing. Is that okay? Yeah, um, you should close at first your presentation. So the this um the the screening of your presentation and then i will show it from here to everybody okay good mm -hmm. so let me move on ah. so dignified menstruation is beyond the infrastructure and hygiene that means health education human rights empowerment water sanitation and environment have to go simultaneously I always define by TP. Principally, the menstruation has to consider through the human right lens. It is a human right concern. Practically, it is it is the concept. We have already seen that the complexity of the menstruation the multifaceted nature of the menstruation. We cannot see in the linear way. So it has to consider and intervene from ohm to toe. That means before the puberty, puberty, uh, menarche, reproductive age, and menopause. In some culture, the menstrual, uh, menstruators even cannot see during the death rituals. Forget about the participation or leading the funerals. They cannot see. So there is an implication throughout the life, home to home. So it has to see in a very holistic approach. Likewise, in terms of the sector, has to go simultaneously, the all sectors, which is uh, impacted by the restrictions uh, of during menstruation. Psychologically, here, I like to recall the, uh, the uh, notion of the power construction by the menstrual restriction. If we really wanted to create the gender justice society, equal egalitarian society, we have to initiate the dialogue. We have to cultivate the culture of the uh, justice inside from the home. So principally, practically, and psychologically, if we go in a way that we can achieve the dignified insulation. In daily business, to, to make understandable to the people who do not know about all kind of uh, 
preventive things. It's a very simple definition. The dignified menstruation is a state of free from any forms of abuse, discrimination, violence as to the menstruation. Or there should not be a difference between 25 days and five days. You may think, oh, during the menstruation, the menstruator could have the abdominal cramps or backache, vomiting or headache or something like that. Yes. About 5% of, of the menstruators, they experience that kind of symptoms. In general, 85% of the menstruators experience, but out of 85%, 5% experience severe symptoms. These are the health condition. But this should not consider, should not uh, treat with discrimination or abuse or, or separation or, or any kind of uh, um, uh, maltreatment because of the menstruation. So dignified menstruation during the COVID-19 pandemic. Very honestly, I'm not biased because I'm a woman or I'm victim or I'm activist for the dignified menstruation. The dignity is important than uh, before because the COVID-19 pandemic differently impacts among men and women. It, it, it doesn't stop the menstruation. Today, 70% frontliner workers are female. They could be doctors, nurses, the, the kitchen workers, cleaners, so, uh, social workers, security people, or drivers, anyone. And out of them, 26% are in the total age. That means they are menstruating. Let me give you one example uh, from China. In last February, the doctor said urine and blood flow together into the diaper. Because no one gave her the menstrual panty or pad or anything uh, as her choice. And she could not ask with the suppliers because of the stigma, remorse. The hospital workers, female workers, they started to taking the control pills, contraceptive pills, to stop the menstruation while they are working uh, around the clock in hospitals or um, as a frontliner for the COVID-19. Because of the stigma, because of the terror, they cannot manage and the government is not managing. The menstrual product is not considered as an essential drug supply or um, important uh, logistic uh, uh, um, for such uh, pandemic. And in hospitals, the government everywhere across the globe, the hospitals, quarantines, isolations is operating. And what about the menstruation? Are the dignified menstrual friendly? Is there toilets, the menstrual availability of the uh, uh, menstrual product, proper hand washing um, uh, uh, facility over there? Not. The literature has already shown that no one considered about the menstruation. And because of the lockdown, those who are not in the frontliners, living in their house or their accommodation, they are also not able to live with the dignity because of the stigma, restriction, taboos around the menstruation. In addition to, because they are living in a single room and they don't have a, uh, enough space and they, they have to use the same toilet with the limited water and the water is not uh, uh, um, clean enough. In that situation, you can imagine the current situations of the insulators and its impact in the future. 
and remember can you imagine the life of the daily wages women how uh, are they managing the uh, menstrual product and other uh, hygiene products uh, in such a um, difficult time and the price is not avail easily available there is no income and even they have money the price is going up and there is a breaking in the supply chain even it happened in in our our factory in nepal we we we, we don't have a raw materials within our country even if it is within our country we don't have a um, transport because of the lockdown and we need to bring the materials from india and our, our factory is already stopped and what about the research education and campaigns everyone talk about the oh, which drugs uh, works and which drugs not work and there is a very um, big uh, politics drama going on with the uh, big people big countries but no one talk about the menstruation no one uh, even imagine about the menstruation so in this scenario the dignified menstruation is a paradigm shift paradigm shift for the peace human right empowerment and sdg of course the menstrual activism too the many many stakeholders not only in nepal everywhere across the world who are working around peace human right empowerment gender based violence sdg even the menstrual activism they do not like to hear the word of the dignified menstruation they have a phobia with this word they do not see the connection between the dignified menstruation and the peace human right and the dignified menstruation so dignified menstruation urges to all stakeholders to redefining the meaning of the peace human right empowerment sdg radha powder foundation global south coalition for dignified menstruation initiated the dignified menstruation day for december 8 it's a day for 16 days activism since last last year and nepal government ministry for women children and uh, senior citizen endorses it and has been working a lot and also plan for the international uh, workshop on dignified menstruation which is the ever first event at the global level here i like to um, ask to manma madam to uh, uh, raise the hand she is she is the joint secretary uh, from the government uh, ministry of women children and senior citizen in nepal and she is uh, leading on behalf of the ministry and it's really a uh, pleasure and uh, honor to have her uh, she is so proactive and she is trying to endorse everywhere and why producing the ic materials i mean the um, materials for the awareness raising for covid 19 pandemic um, the dignified menstruation elements of the dignified menstruation also indoors already in the campaign so menstruation is not only the women's issue or the private issue it is a human right issue it is a political issue that means it is everyone business it is not a business because i am woman i am menstruate i am victim or i am from nepal poor country developing country no no matter whether you are male female or lesbian or gay uh, politician or journalist or ngo worker or government worker it is everyone business if you really wanted to uh, bring the sustained peace you really wanted to uh, work proactively uh, Uh, for the human rights we have to work on dignified menstruation so my request uh, please uh, use the hashtag for the dignified menstruation if you like to share the photo information about menstruation and uh, uh, for 2020 we also we means nepal I also come up with the slogan menstrual talk dignity first this is the slogan for 2020 uh, so 
if you are uh, organizing any kind of uh, campaign, education programs, or any activity related with the menstruation, please use this slogan and hashtag menstrual talk dignity first. And I humbly request each of you to initiate the dialogue everywhere, wherever you stand, at home, at church, mosque, temple, with your father, priest, wife, partner, everywhere with everyone. Thank you. Now, uh, Maya, uh, show the video, right? And then we'll do the question answer. Tin dekhi chhame na bitra sabai kunchay chay tiyo sala ko bakra bada banana kunchay ra aur ujan polymer aur baira cover banana rahe kunchay jo boyo gum boyo sabai krachi organic koi na rojo isma kuni chemical sir aale kundai na yu matra pinti mein rakda kiri door ba tar isari logira rakda kiri chay tapai ko yu matra change gari boy ke isko zada apni zada yu matra change gari boy yu chhi pinti mein baira ncha hai na ani yu chhi extra le ra goi boy bilsa bani dhoni sukauni na boy ani poko banana le ani gari layer dhoni gari na pare. तपाईं चाहिँ फाइभ स्टार होटेलको स्ट्यान्डमा घरमा बस्नुहुन्छ तपाईलाई मन परेको कुनै एउटा प्याड रोजेर लाउन पाउनुहुन्छ हैन तर तपाईं चाहिँ भान्सामा सँगै बसेर तपाईंको बा अथवा तपाईंको भाइसँग हजुरा बा हजुरामासँग बसेर एउटै डाइनिङ टेबलमा खाना पाउनुहुन्न भने के हुन्छ त्यसको इम्प्याक्ट वी ह्याभ टु स्पिक अबाउट द डिग्निटी इच गर्ल डिजर्भ डिग्निटी ड्युरिङ द मेन्सुरेसन द्याट मिन्स सी क्यान डू एभ्रिथिङ नो मेटर वेदर सी ह्याज अ पिरियड अफ नट तब पांच दिन पो मिल सुनो उनसा तो तर बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ द रेस्ट्रिक्शन ड्यूरिंग द फाइव डेज यू हैव अ फीलिंग ऑफ़ डी मुनाइजेशन थ्रू आउट द मंथ थ्रू आउट द लाइफ के एंड पावरलेस वरुण की नो उनसा के इलाइक द मोलिस्टिक एप्रोच में एड्रेस करनो पड़ता है ना प्यार मतलब बांधे रहो था बात इंपोज करे रहो जबरदस्ती गोट हरू बत काय रहो था गाली करे रहो पत्रिका में निकाले रहो मतलब उन्होंने ना के महीना बारी चाहे बने को अष्टर रगतो खोरी रगतो बने जिन ब्राह्म था तो ब्राह्म नहीं निकालना पड़ता डिग्निफाइड yeah so we should uh, now just so respond the question answer mm -hmm. uh, is there someone who wants to ask something right now? Manman, madam, do you want to share anything? Do you? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Radha, madam. Uh, I want to share something, um, but I am uh, writing there in the chat box also. Dignified menstruation now become government agenda. Uh, you are initiator. We are proud of you, but now become government agent so that uh, everywhere we include this agenda within our development uh, activities plan program everywhere and uh, coming year we are going to meet a uh, new policy and budget and we already include this agenda uh, with slogan of menstrual talk dignity first so uh, we feel it is human right issues, not only women's issues. And that's why uh, we must uh, include this agenda everywhere. And we are going to, uh, we were uh, decided to conduct our seminar this uh, May as 26-18, but unfortunately it uh, stopped now, but coming year. We were going to uh, conduct the seminar. Then we um, saw the issues everywhere. 
and sensitized to every uh, everywhere and uh, we uh, include this issue to education uh, uh, agenda every development agenda so that this issue is uh, it's very uh, important for uh, every world not only the this uh, government this nepal only but also every all that's why uh, this agenda we uh, recognize we uh, sensitize and we include everywhere with a mind to uh, that means we want to uh, change mindset every planner every policy maker political parties and everywhere that's why this is very important issues and uh, this mission you are uh, you people are here uh, we are uh, mission is same mission is same uh, we uh, want to uh, dignify our agenda and we want to make our uh, women's issues as a human rights issues and it is not only development agenda but also uh, holistic agenda that's why government of nepal uh, we together uh, conduct everywhere sensitize everywhere with jointly so welcome you all for this uh, mission for achieving this mission thank you what is it complete okay thank you thank you manma madam i saw the questions in a chat box uh, how could we celebrate the may month um, during uh, i mean um, covid 19 so very important question we have uh, actually i wanted to get the solution from you all um, how could we make it happen in this such a difficult situation we have already started uh, few things for example globally we are requesting asking to make the video one minute to two, two minutes video even the selfie is fine uh, on the importance uh, how could we incorporate into this uh, um, response uh, covid 19 uh, response so you can send the videos we have already started on that and we also continuously advocating to the friends partners who are working with us in different parts of the country and the global level to incorporate the quality of uh, sanitary product its availability and the um, other hygiene materials like soap water and sanitizer which are very important and we also ask um, and lobby for incorporate the menstrual product into the uh, logistic uh, non food items uh, into the relief material um even the ministry of women and children um, mandatorily asked to all stakeholders to um, uh, provide the menstrual um, uh, product in the um, uh, shelters or the nest home uh, the women shelters uh, where women are living because of some kind of violence in their life so, and other um, uh, uh, places like quarantine isolation we keep pushing this agenda mm. however because of the lockdown because of the communication transportation it is still not able to reach out as we expect and um, but uh, the may month is coming which is considered the menstrual hygiene uh, month um, uh, hygiene is one of the important element for the dignified menstruation so we want to celebrate it so please um, advise us how could we go and uh, till now we keep thinking to mobilize the digital world uh, through the facebook twitter instagram photo messages uh, postcards whatever possible we are trying to make it and we humbly request each of you to participate in this uh, global uh, moment and My i also saw the, another question regarding the engagement of the boys from the friend from eastern nepal but it is already up uh, 
uh, it is yeah but it is uh, if you go to organize the awareness raising program for two hours or one day it is very difficult but based on my experience i worked in very remote area of the country i worked with the uh, illiterate literally uneducated people the faith very strict faith healers the priest um, even the uh, uh, maulana the uh, um, uh, a uh, priest from the uh, muslim community so i in the beginning it is a little bit difficult but i always use the participatory very reflective methods uh, i use the um, games history drama based on the it is not the very fixed methodology it depends on the context it depends on the uh, understanding uh, of the audience based on that i use i choose and i first i ventilate them Uh, to express their uh, understanding knowledge practices frustration and anger around the menstrual menstrual or menstrual practice and then uh, i gradually entered into the human right uh, the gender they don't know whether they, they uh, I, i was talking about gender or not human right or not but we keep talking simply as i asked earlier why did uh, how did you know the menstruation at first what was the first feeling if you were uh, um, women during that time what would be your feeling so very simple very reflective methodology i use and uh, um, within 4 hours uh, they, they uh, were convinced and later within 2 to 3 months they become a champion and they replace me in the community and in the beginning i was the first slide first but gradually during the education process and when they empower i i gradually get back and the, when they are ready to emancipate to abolish all kind of restriction um i totally in the in the back and they lead the uh, movement this is how i work so i strongly believe that we can make it uh, we can we have to engage because uh, without engaging boys men petitioners politician uh, media the main media people we cannot uh, achieve the goal what we really want it because uh, it is all about the power dynamics it is all about the knowledge um, uh, it is all about the sharing and all men are not violent and they are not violent uh, when they born this is the socialization process that is why this is our responsibility to educate and empower them as well this is how i think how can we share the videos for ideas for the may month okay uh, you can use the um, uh, twitter uh, of global south coalition or other pole foundation or myself uh, there there is a uh, number for the whatsapp in the website you simply send the uh, video in uh, um, whatsapp through the whatsapp whatsapp and don't make the video uh, um, longer maximum 2 minutes and Uh, right now i am receiving the videos and displaying in website and everywhere from france the um, indonesia the uh, uh, myanmar uh, so i am maximum use of the uh, technology right now so it is very easy uh, you can try you just uh, put the mobile in a uh, in your uh, location i mean the same position you you can put in the chair on, on, on above the chair or something Uh, as your position and then you can uh, shoot by yourself sometimes it works in first time sometimes it will uh, uh, you have to work with twice thrice but it will work anyway we need a message we don't we don't care about uh, how much fancy it is we just need a message and dignified mission why it is very urgent why it is very important and why the uh, menstrual talk dignity first is, is very important that kind of things we want to and we consider any more question uh yes please i have a question namaste radha ji himalayu padya speaking um i have an one observation and one question please please so i'm a nepali i'm um, of nepali origin but i grew up in europe and i wanted to emphasize your point about dignity and how true it is by giving you my own example i was very fortunate to go to a boarding school in england with just girls who were only women and girls we never felt one day of taboo or any lesser than a man because we were all girls together 
We all had periods together. We never for one day felt lesser or subhuman. And how, what did that translate into? When we became adults, all of us have good jobs in a man's world. We are su successful. We feel confident. So I completely understand and echo what you are saying about dignity, given my example of not feeling bad about having a period. My question to you is, as I've traveled around Nepal, I've seen the younger generation of girls, because they have access to internet and much more open than their mothers, they don't believe in the taboo and they don't believe in having to restrict themselves during the period. But the big problem, Radhaji, that I see, and I'd like to hear your opinion on this one, is about the practices are so tied up with our culture and religion. So even these young girls who don't want to be restricted, they are worried when it comes to their own fathers. They think, oh, maybe there is a God and maybe God will get angry and maybe my own father will get sick and die. So even these like open-minded girls, because of the religious background, are a little bit hesitant. And this is an issue I see a lot in the villages. People are very religious. And because this whole taboo has been very cleverly tied up with a religion, it's not that easy, even if governments work and everybody is you know, working towards this, it's the mindset of the mothers and of the girls themselves. And what can you say about that, please? Thank you very much. First, um, thank you for sharing your story. It is very powerful, very inspiring. Uh, actually, this is, the, this is our goal. Uh, in my family, no one follow the restriction and during the menstruation, my younger sister, myself and my brother um, did the death ritual of my mother uh, about 12 years back. So, um, so we need to amplify the stories like yours, mine, uh, to build the confidence uh, across the globe, one thing. Please send me the video or the write-up so I can post in our site of dignified menstruation. The second question, yes, it is very common um, uh, uh, practice, uh, not only in Nepal. I, I travel many uh, more than dozens of uh, countries across the globe and everywhere when I go into the deeper level interaction, discussion about the menstruation, I found the same thing, mostly the same thing everywhere. I didn't have a very, um, uh, uh, what is called, um, uh, mathematical, like mathematical modeling right now, it is very common. I don't have a uh, answer like this, but based on my experience, I always believe in the dialogue. I want to recall um, you the, uh, the power construction theory because of the menstrual restriction. We never have the dialogue, we never talk about it. We have a, I met so many friends who are working in women empowerment, peace building in UN, and they have a PhD degree, but they are following the restriction during insulation. Because uh, the answer is the same as you said earlier. And that kind of fear come from because we don't have a dialogue on it. If we constantly talk about, because it is, it is not possible to abolish all kind of restriction or fear uh, overnight. Even in my case, uh, I, I keep thinking, I keep learning, and then um, um, I, I start to test. So what I learned from the uh, engagement with the different kinds of people uh, in Nepal and outside, Mobile once, they, once they know the um, uh, anatomy and physiology, they start to think, they start to test themselves, and gradually they, they attempt it. And they, first they have to trust themselves. Um, and then they, they uh, start to uh, transform at the individual level. Once they transform at the, within the person, it is easier to convince, to transform to the others, or to take the, the leadership, uh, to, uh, leadership role uh, for that particular uh, community or group. And in Nepal, um, in Kathmandu, I uh, keep going in the universities and the colleges to talk uh, about the dignified menstruation and all the girls, uh, they are living in a five-story house and still they are confined in a single room for five days, seven days during first period and they cannot go to the 
kitchen, cannot touch their fathers, cannot uh, eat in the same dining table during the uh, regular period. And why it has happened? And I keep asking uh, with the men, and because they never talk, uh, they are the health worker, they never talk, we just taken for granted. And it also happening in the Europe, in USA and even in other countries, because because of the technology, because of the uh, well uh, economic background, we just taken for granted, but we don't have a dialogue. And if we constantly keep talking about the menstruation, it's anatomy and physiology, it is easier, it gives the confidence, and then we can make it happen. This is how I think. Thank you very much, Radhaji. Very grateful that you've put it on the agenda in Nepal. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, we are already uh, it's f uh, like <laughs> we, we, the time is already running over. So I think we will close now the webinar soon. Um, so uh, there was still one question: How we can, uh, if there is a Facebook group uh, from Inge, where we can share the on daily basis um, information and pictures? Um, is there one? But we do not have a dedicated Facebook group for the dignified nutrition, but we have a Facebook page and Twitter, Instagram, dedicated uh, accounts uh, for the dignified nutrition. So this the Instagram side would be more uh, the site where we should share uh, pictures and videos and so on. Yeah. Anyway, um, so. Yeah, there's this page of the South uh, Global South uh, Coalition for Dignified Menstruation, and there you will find all the information um, about these issues. Um, yeah, so I re really thank you very much, Tata, for your input and everybody for the discussions. I think we will keep on um, working for the empowerment of the girls and transgenders, and yeah, hopefully this may uh activism will will be set up um yeah and uh we also will post this uh meeting this this uh video of this meeting on the youtube channel i also sent you the links so that you um have it so that you can also uh, look it up here in the chat and there's still one thing because next week we will also have um, the screen, or we will also have a webinar um, with um, uh, one film where uh, Rada is so, so, um, um, how you say, uh, a protagonist. And I will also, yeah, here you can also find once more the, the contact from Rada if you want to have it. And um, the the film I'm think uh, I'm talking about is here. Um, like next week on the 29th of April, we will discuss Homebird, and we will also show it on this in the same time the film um, with the filmmaker Andrea Leichtfried. He will be also there in the webinar, and yeah, it's really a very great. Um, Part of it is also talking about Chabadi, um, and Rada is also in the film. So, yeah, we invite everybody to join. And here below, you also see the link for the film in English if you want to watch it like this. Um, yeah, all this information you can find on our homepage from the RRA. I also posted it already. So, yeah, this is information from my side. Yeah, so <laughs> thank you everybody and yeah we stay uh, we keep on activism for dignified menstruation thank you very much uh, my all friends who are joining and maya inge daniela and everyone yeah thank you so much Rana. thank you stay safe love you yeah, all you all you all too shall i leave Everybody can leave now. Bye. <laughs> Bye.